We all buy stuff, which means we all participate in the economy. But how does something get from, say, a tree to this? And what will happen to this at the end of its life? I'm Leila Rajaralu and I am a designer and sociologist obsessed with figuring out how the world works so that we can design a future that works better for all of us. And this is pretty much what the concept of the circular economy is all about. How do we make sure that we get the things that we need today without having negative impacts on the future? Before I tell you all about the circular economy, let me tell you about the linear economy. Basically, every single thing that's produced, everything you own from the shoes you're wearing to the computer that you're watching this on has been produced in the traditional linear economy. This is where we take raw materials out of the ground, such as mining, uh, cutting down trees, or shearing it off a sheep's back, turn it into a usable good, and then once we've used it, it ends up going to landfill or maybe it gets burned for energy, or in a really extreme case, it escapes out into the wild. So what's up with the current linear economy? Well, essentially, in order to produce all of this stuff, we need to pull resources out of nature. And when we do that, it creates problems, and not just, say, waste like this. It also produces air pollution, toxicity, it destroys ecosystems that help sustain life on this planet. And why is that important to you and me? Because we are biological beings. We need air, food and water to survive and so we need nature. So it makes sense for us to figure out how to design the goods and services that make our lives fantastically fun, enjoyable and easy in ways that don't negatively impact the things that also keep us alive. Look, the economy, it's pretty fantastic. It's helped us get to this incredible point in human history where we can pretty much get everything we need at the click of a button. People all over the globe get things that make their lives happier and healthier. But there is a negative side to all of this mass production, and that is that we've created a lot of wasteful systems. Systems where things just don't have value anymore, like all the disposable stuff that we have in our lives. And now we're starting to see that that's having a negative impact on not just us, but on a lot of the systems that we need, like the oceans. There's lots of plastic in the oceans. It's a huge problem. And so what we need to do is to start to design our products and our services to be more sustainable, to close the loop on the production. That's pretty much what the circular economy is about, and it applies to all of us. So to get your head around the circular economy, we need to start with something pretty basic. Everything, absolutely everything around you comes from nature. Everything, even the most plastic thing in the world comes from nature. And this is the thing, nature provides us with all of these resources for free. Well, it's actually not free. It's actually that our economy sees it as for free because everything we take out of nature, like if we cut down a tree, we lose the ability to sequester carbon, or if we keep putting plastic in the ocean, we lose the ability to produce food stocks such as fish. So ultimately, everything we take out of nature is at a cost. It's just a cost to the future. So what we're trying to do now is change the way we value things, change the way we value the resources that nature provides us. So that when we're looking at producing goods and services in the economy, things that you and I buy, that you and I need, we do it in way more sustainable ways. That means that we understand the true cost of taking things out of nature and of putting pollutions back in there so that when we design things, we can design it so that it fits within a beautiful circular system. In the circular economy, what we do is we recapture resources at the end of life, but we have to design for that at the beginning. We have two different types of systems. Biological systems, like things that come from nature, they can be recycled basically the way nature does things, like composting and biodegradation. I'll talk about that more in a later video. And then we have the industrial processes, like the more synthetic things. They get recycled or remanufactured. But the point that I want to tell you now is that the future is all about circular thinking. And it's really exciting. Businesses, governments, individuals all over the world are starting to engage with this stuff, figuring out how they can use their creativity, change their lifestyles, or put policies in place to help us design a future that works better than today. One that doesn't have some of the big problems that we know that we're facing. And this is what's really exciting for you, is that this is what your future profession is going to have. So start thinking about how circular thinking and circular economy stuff can be part of your life today. 
So after this video, you're gonna be challenged to think differently about an everyday product. The jeans you're wearing, the cell phone in your pocket. You're gonna be seriously surprised by how many different materials and processes go into making the things that touch every single minute of your life. And this is the exciting thing about the circular economy. It's the future. It's gonna affect every single profession. It already is. And your lives are already affected by some of the negative things from the linear economy. So this is the awesome thing about thinking this way, about challenge the way we create things, is that it's going to have a positive impact for all of us. You need to think about this, I need to think about it, because we all breathe, and we need nature in order to survive, and we need it in order to thrive. So, the challenge now is how you're gonna be involved in designing a future that works better for all of us. So, it's really hard to end. I'm gonna come back. I don't want to leave you. <laughs> We've had this time together.